Alright, welcome back. This is going to be a review on one-dimensional motion. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you a heads up. I'm probably going to make this a two-part video so that it's not like a 30-minute long video. Uh, first thing I want to review is applications of just something as simple as average velocity. The most common type of average velocity question is going to be a problem where you have something, let's say it starts here, and it's driving, it's driving, it's driving. It's not speeding up, it's not slowing down. These problems usually don't work that way. But it's driving, it's driving, it could be north, south, east, west, whatever. And usually what this problem is going to be, again, you won't see any reference to the word acceleration. This problem can be characterized with just V, X, and T. What it's usually going to do is tell you two of these three factors for this. Now, it could keep doing it. It could give you five pieces down through here. But usually, we'll just do on this one. We'll just do two pieces here. And so we'll do the second section here. So we've got a two-piece problem. Now, but it's not like this two-part type of problem. All we've got going on in this one is two pieces of this problem. And I'll give you a little way to look at it. Say it's a problem. Uh, here, you can help me write it. Let's say that the person starts out by driving 50 miles per hour for how long? Let's say for 1.5 hours. This is all part one is. No velocity initial, no velocity final. It's just an average velocity and a time. Well, I wonder what it is they're wanting us to find here. Probably that displacement. But anyway, let's say, though, that this person, let's say that there's a piece in between. Let's say that this person stops. Let's say, and we don't even have it in there, but we'll just write in, that we've got to stop. That this person does stop, and let's just say that they have a break to eat some chicken fingers for 30 minutes. Doesn't have to be chicken fingers. Could be trip to Arby's. Oh, wait, this is... Probably that's like free advertising. My bad, Arby's. Anyway, so let's say they have a 30-minute stop in here. So they drive for 50 miles an hour for one and a half hours. Hey, let's stop. Get something neat. All right, now, now they're driving again. Let's say that this next time they drive 100 miles, and they do this. They're going nice and leisurely, though. It takes some, oop, not three miles, but let's say it takes them three hours to complete this trip. These problems usually just want to know one thing. What is? They want to know the total distance. That means you want to know the x for part one and the x for part two is what you're trying to find. And then usually they want to know what is the velocity for the entire trip. This is stock physics 101 here. If you want to know the velocity for the whole trip, the velocity for the whole trip all we have to do, and this better be coached into your head, and I better see it on paper if I'm the one grading it. If I want to know the velocity for trip, I want the total x. I want to know what x is for the whole trip. And then I want to know what was the time for the entire trip, meaning I want the time that they drove here, the time they drove here, plus I want to know about the 30-minute break in the problem. So let's kind of do this one. Look at what we know about part one. We've got V and T. Well, we can find X for part one. V equals X over T. I write my equation down because I'm a good student like that. And so we've got 50 equals X over 1.5 is what we end up with in this problem. Well, 50 times 1.5, what is that going to be? Well, 50 times 1.5 is going to be equal to 75 miles. So this first x is, I'll write it in red and try to stand out. This first x is 75 miles. So there, we've got our first distance. Now, this is great. We've already solved for our total distance. What is the total displacement in this problem? Well, it already looks like x total, x total is 175 miles. Boom, we've just got that. Now, if you want to know the time for the entire trip, all we've got to do is add up all the times. Well, 30 minutes, that's a half of an hour. And so our total trip is three and a half plus one and a half, so four. We've got a total time of five hours in this problem. 
Now if we divide 5 and 175, we get an average velocity of 35 miles per hour. That's how easy that question is. All these problems are the same, though. When they start doing this stuff about average velocities and all this kind of hoo-ha, all you need to be thinking about is finding, whoa, whack the camera. Now, that's a good way to mess the whole video up. Give me a second here, and I'll try and get this back in line. Sorry, YouTube world. Man, I feel like such a loser now. I'll probably get, like, no reviews on this video because of this. All right. Maybe that's pretty close to being back into the right place. All right. So, now what do we do? I'm still tinkering with my camera. Turn it. All right. So, now, again, all I want you to do, if it's a problem about somebody taking a trip like this, just work the problem. Find V, X, T for each section. Find V, X, T. If it has three sections, find V, X, T for each section. Find V, X, T for each section. And then what you're going to do, if you've got three X's, one, two, three. When you go to find for the whole trip, what are you going to do? You're going to take X1, you're going to take X2, and you're going to take X3. The, what are you going to use for time? Well, you're going to use the time for each single thing. Time one plus time two plus time three. It's just a bunch of little problems all put into one. If you've got somebody stopping to go watch a movie, you're going to also include the time that they took to watch their movie in there. And as far as Gump would say, that's all I've got to say about that at this point. So let's try and see what else we can do. What about basic acceleration problems? Basic acceleration problems all start out just like this. Basic acceleration. Basic acceleration, they're going to have a VO. They're going to have a V. And then they're going to have an AX and a T. That's our basic. Every acceleration question is going to look like this. All you've got to do is, once again, you've got to look for three of these things, and that's all you've got to do in the problem. A guy gets in his car. He goes from zero to 60. Wait. Zero to 60. And just pay attention to your units. For the most part, we're going to try and work about everything in meters per second here on out when it comes to this kind of stuff. And now all you'd have to know is an A, X, or T. Every acceleration problem you work in this one-dimensional or to look just like this when you go to work them out. So this shouldn't be a question. All right. So the only two, the only one-dimensional motion that's hard at all, what do you do when somebody is sitting still? A red light question. Somebody is sitting still at the red light. So they're just sitting here. VO, zero. And they speed up to 20. And then all of a sudden, right as they get to 20, they look, and there's a deer in the road. Oh, no, don't hit the deer. So all of a sudden now, they hit their brakes. So now they hit their brakes. You've got a two-part problem. Part one has an A, X, and a T. Part two has an A, X, and a T. Part two also has a VO and a V. What do these two problems have in common with each other? Velocity final for part one is your velocity initial for part two. Other than that, the problem might ask you to find total distance. Well, if that's so, find x, find x, add the other. It might ask you to find total time. Find time, find time. Add them together. Anyway. That's a rundown of basic uh, one-dimensional motion problems. I'm going to make a second part of this test review to talk about what do you do when something goes up into the air. Maybe it falls back down. Maybe it don't fall back in the ground. But anyway, that will be the next video.